Hey Daniel, how's it going? Happy Sunday. Just gonna tweet out the stream. Give me one second. Hey Tony, how's it going? All right, 21 all already in here. Nice. Uh, let me know uh, if you guys can hear me okay and see the screen. Make sure it's not blurry or anything. That'd be great. And we'll get started when just a few more people show up. Vikram Raul, how's it going? Joseph, how's it going? Or the Josephs, how's it going? Not much. Yeah, no problem, David. Um, I really like doing this as well. Um, I always learn something trying to explain my own viewpoint, so it's it's good for everybody. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Thanks for letting me know. And uh, before we get started, uh, before everybody joins, let me know if you have any questions or uh, stocks that you'd like me to cover today. I'd be happy to do that. And we'll be going through both TC2000 and also checking fundamentals in MarketSmith. Raymond, how's it going? Awesome. Hey, Andreas, how's it going? Yeah, no problem. Happy to do it. And we'll just wait for a few more people to show up. Let me make sure my video is muted. Okay, good. Yeah, for those of you just joining, uh, thanks for coming. And if you have any charts that you'd like me to talk about, um, I don't have really a set agenda. I, I can go through the charts I'm focused on this week. Uh, this is my focus list, but happy to take any chart recommendations, um, or chart requests rather. And, uh, I'll give you my take as well. And anything discussed in this live stream is for educational purposes only. Uh, make sure you do your own due diligence, practice good risk management, um, and all of that. Uh, RCII, let's take a look at that. Yeah, so consolidating against the 50, nice estimates, uh, nice earnings as well. Um, top group, so yeah, um, operates franchises. Yeah, I, had, I hadn't seen this one just yet. Furniture, electronics in US, Canada. Yeah, definitely. You've got um, some pivots here, right at the 50 SMA. Um, pretty good, low risk, potentially high reward entry point and going to a weekly um, right at all time highs. Let's see if we take a look at a monthly. Yeah, looks pretty good. All right, we're seeing some tickers come in here. Yeah, Inmo, let's take a look at that one because this was on my focus list a while ago, but it had kind of gone short-term extended. So we'll see how this is now. So uh, yeah, this is still trending beautifully into all-time highs. Uh, looks great. Um, I love looking back here. Look how tight it was right here. That, that's really impressive. And even um, <clears throat> during this consolidation here, it was pretty tight against the 50 for quite a while. Uh, then it moved up, got tight. It was pretty tight again here. Pretty short-term entry here, and then within this kind of consolidation here, had some pivots, nice move up on volume, and looks pretty good. Inside day on Friday, uh, for me, it's a little bit too extended here for uh, an entry, but if it goes sideways again, then moves up through these highs or through this pivot, uh, that would be a pretty good entry point. Yeah, let's take a look. QRBO. Yep, I believe that's pulling back to a pivot, if I remember correctly. If I can type, type it correctly, QRVO. There we go. Yeah, so this is pulling back nicely. A lot of the semiconductor related stocks in general look pretty similar to this. Either they're forming a handle within the base or uh, they broke out and now are pulling back. Um, AMAT has a similar look as well. Um, but going back to QRVO, uh, this looks really nice against this pivot. Um, lower volume during this consolidation, that's great. Um, I don't like the kind of failed move up on this Friday, but um, I mean, it still is holding above these lows, which is the important part, and it's right at that pivot. So definitely, potentially um, a good entry point, maybe through these highs or through the prior all-time high at 199.94, right near the kind of two times deliver more level. So it looks pretty good. Uh, Sunil asks, does three-week type put tickers on your radar or do you act or do you act on it as well? It all depends on the overall pattern. So if it's tight um, against the bottom of a base, uh, take a look at Snap here. If you go to a weekly, 
this was a three weeks tight at the bottom of uh, the base, suggesting that uh, there's actually accumulation going on um, and there's not much selling at all. You can see low volume here. Uh, so this will catch my eye within the base. And then once the stock is broken out and then forms a three weeks tight, that's a potential add on pattern. Or you could use this consolidation, buy it through the highs here. And that's what we call a consolidation pivot. Um, so we go back to a daily. Um, you've got a slight pullback here, really tight against the bottom here, and then a little bit of a move up um, on not really high volume, but it's just an alternate way of entering a stock versus the final breakout, which um, often pulls back right to the pivot. Yeah, RH, I completely agree with you, Alan. Going to RH, this has been very, very strong breakout through this pivot um, and nice move on Friday as well. Um, looking at the group, it's in it's in the top 40 groups. Um, earnings not super explosive. This isn't a, a software stock, so earnings aren't going to be huge, but really strong estimates, um, estimate revisions up. Comms rating 98. You can't really go wrong with these type of IVD ratings. Um, increasing fund ownership and two high quality funds in there as well. So look strong. Um, probably position trade. You want to start right here, and potentially a swing trade. You started on Friday. Hey, Anish, how's it going, man? You're incognito, I see. Uh, but I recognize you from your profile picture. Uh, MGNI, let's take a look at that. So MGNI, um, this is like a lot of former small cap growth names. You're quite far from all-time highs. And personally, um, if institutions really want into a stock, it's not going to really, uh, it's not going to be this far off all-time highs. The stocks that are getting accumulated stay within 30% of all-time highs. Usually those are the better bases. And often uh, the semiconductors, for instance, those are already breaking out into new all-time highs and basing a little bit. And those are your leaders. Um, MGNI was very strong in 2020. Um, you had some nice gap ups here, uh, but so far it didn't, didn't find support at the 50 SMA. And at this point, it's just still forming, forming out its base. <laughs> uh, ATKR, let's take a look at that one. The name's familiar, but um, yeah, building construction. Uh, nice earnings last quarter, uh, right near a base pivot here at 75.6 or so. Six or so. Um, decent estimates for 2021, not so great for 2022. Uh, revisions down as well. Um, not really super on my radar, but the, the chart looks very constructive. You've got a pivot here at this high, this one as well, and then of course the standard uh, stage two flat base pivot at 75.6. Um, slightly increasing fund ownership and one high quality fund. So that's good. Earnings are in 11 days. And this is something that uh, we have to start paying attention to again. Uh, you have to know when earnings occurs because it's a binary event and you need to have a cushion if you're going to hold through earnings. Uh, let's take a look at apps because this, this failed a little bit last week, I believe. Yeah. So this is a wide and loose pattern. Um, it was tightening up a little bit, but had a failed breakout then failed the 50 SMA. And for me, it's still basing. Um, I'll be interested if it can form a higher low here, a uh, move up and then really form a pivot drift back down on lower volume and then break through that pivot. But uh, for now, it, it's a no touch for me. Uh, there's better options out there. And let's also take a look at net and pins because those are two former leaders. Um, net looks pretty good. You've got a very powerful bar here on high volume. Once again, earnings in 18 days. Uh, Friday was a little bit of an expectation breaker, um, closing below the 50 SMA, which is decreasing, which kind of um, means the base is a little bit weaker. Uh, but overall, if it can get back above that moving average next week and challenge these pivots, I think that would be very constructive as it tries to build out this right side of the base and eventually challenge this all-time high. You've got uh, still very strong revenue growth, um, supposed to be profitable in 2022. The estimate revisions are up. That's great. Uh, Combos rating is very poor at 58. That's one drawback. And uh, you've got an explosion of fund ownership and three high quality funds, which is very, very good. Uh, so net um, doesn't look too bad. I do want to see it hold uh, kind of pretty much this pivot next week. That would be very constructive and retake that 50 for sure. And um, ideally retake this pivot as well. Um, in terms of pins, this looks like it needs a lot more time. It was moving up strongly off the bottom, but you can see there wasn't much volume and support in that move up. And then it formed a really tight consolidation here. I actually tried it, uh, I think, on this inside day and up. 
Um, sold half on this failed breakout here. It, it, it didn't kind of follow what I was expecting it to do, uh, breaking through this pivot. And then basically another inside day, and then this breakdown where I got sold out of the, the last of my position through these lows. So um, it's back below the 50. It's holding this pivot for now. Uh, but if we go to a weekly, this is a bearish outside week uh, where the expectation really is is downwards. You've got higher volume on this down week, and it just looks to me like it needs it needs some more time within this consolidation to absorb and and kind of um, digest this very strong move that it had in 2020. You still have very strong estimates for both 2021 and 2022. This is still a young stock, but until the price action agrees um, with the fundamentals, um, it's a no touch for me. You've got very strong earnings. Uh, but the story can stay the same and the price action can still um, be pretty bad. So I want to be focused on the stocks with the strongest price action and fundamental. So everything is working together and just increasing the probability that that setup will work. Yeah, I agree. This, this volume gives me a little bit of pause on, on Friday. And uh, it was it was very high from the start. It looked a little bit like liquidation. It tried to rally above the 50, but then closed right near the low. So uh, we'll see what happens here. It could recover uh, but until it tightens up again and uh, presents a good low-risk entry point, um, I'll leave it alone. Uh, I just went over apps. Somebody asked about apps. I just talked about that. So uh, this video will be recorded on my channel. So feel free to uh, scroll back and, and check that out. So uh, somebody asked about Uber. This is on my watch list for next week. You've got this pivot here at 61.02. A uh, nice inside day on this past Friday. A little bit far from the moving averages. This might have been a good consolidation pivot to get in. Obviously, that's hindsight. Um, but you had a gap up, so it's kind of tough to position last week. Uh, but once again, consolidating nicely within the stage two consolidation. Um, and the standard pivot here is 65 point, uh, 64 rather, 0 0.05. Um, depth is 21%, so that's that's a pretty good depth for a base. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can kind of uh, cheat our way in before the true breakout to all-time highs. If we go to a weekly, um, this looks pretty good. It's just breaking out above its IPO um, due diligence zone, which is this part right here, and potentially starting its institutional um, advance phase at this moment. Uh, let's see. Um, let's, let's look at IWM and also IWO. So uh, this looks constructive. It's pulling back to the 50. Uh, you've got kind of a pivot here. This is index. Um, or there's an ETF rather, so keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, th this this looks, it's forming a higher low, looks constructive. We'll see if it can move up to the upside, uh, but definitely you want to see it break through this to the upside rather than roll over below the 50 and the 50 to turn down. That would not be a good sign. And also looking at the IWO, um, which is the growth um, portion of the Russell, this looks a little bit weaker, which is why a lot of people are struggling right now, especially if they're focused on the leaders of last year. Um, you can see it's below the 50. It's declining rather than if we go back to the IWM, um, holding strong above the 50. It's a little bit of relative strength here. Um, uh, this is showing poor relative strength rather than the IWM. And once again, you've got that same type of pivot, which also lines up with the 50 pretty closely. So uh, definitely, if you want the growth names to be working, the, IW, the IWO moving back to all-time highs would be a very good sign. Uh, let's take a look at Lyft because we just looked at Uber, so might as well look at Lyft as well. And um, if we go to a weekly here. <clears throat> I'm just got to drink a water real quick. I really like the look of this weekly. Very strong off the bottom here. RS line, very strong as well. Uh, consolidating nicely below this kind of um, resistance point, which was pretty much uh, during its IPO move up, um, a significant level of resistance. Then it went in this longer term IPO due diligence phase, start moving up on volume from the stage one cup, and then had a very strong hammer week off the 50, retaking that key moving average. So you've got a potential pivot here at this high of this week, and going back to a daily, um, you've got a descending trend line. So uh, we'll see what happens. You've also got this pivot at 68.28, uh, so definitely looks strong. Uh, once again, you've got this very strong day off the 50 SMA, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. This ideally would have been the spot to get in, uh, but maybe it pulls back a little bit, then moves through this line. That could be a pretty good entry point as well as through these highs. Uh, the Josephs, by the way, um, please don't spam. Um, if I see the ticker, I see the ticker. Um, but, but don't just keep 
pointing out the same ticker in the chat. Uh, that's that's distracting. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at some more um, semis because all of those look pretty good. Um, AMAT, um, descending trend line right here above this pivot, looks pretty good, pulling back to the 21 EMA area on below average volume last week. Um, earnings in 32 days, great estimates, uh, strong earnings in terms of quarterly, increasing fund ownership, and two high quality funds as well. Um, LRCX looks pretty similar. Uh, it's pulling back, so it's, it's a little. It looks a little bit stronger actually than AMAT, because uh, it's not just pulling back all the way down. It actually had to move up on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, but a little bit of a failure here on Friday. It is very low volume, which is constructive within this kind of high handle here. This is a stage two base, and uh, nice estimates for 2021, um, and strong quarterly earnings as well, increasing fund ownership, high quality funds. Um, so you've got some pivots here. You've got Friday's high, and this high as well. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Um, yeah, Scott's saying Moo is the ETF. Let's go look at DE. Oop, let me type that in. Yeah, look, trending really well. Um, it's kind of wedging up on low volume here, so that's one thing to consider. But if this pulls back to 21 EMA, that'd be pretty good. Um, great estimates for 2021. Um, very strong quarterly earnings as well. Increasing fund ownership through high quality funds looks good. Um, yeah, my, my only, um, I guess I don't like this wedging action too much, um, but looks very, very strong, trending really well. And looking at Moo, uh, this looks similar, breaking out to all time highs actually. And uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Let's take a look at uh, Roku from TikTok investors. I like your tweets, man. They're funny. Uh, let's see. So Roku, pretty deep consolidation here. It actually isn't getting picked up as a base, unless Market Smith pattern rec is just being a little bit slow today. But anyway, uh, 486 to 300 or so. I can't do the mental math right now. But um, yeah, a little bit of a deeper base, V-shaped recovery. I might expect some pullback, then eventually move up. Uh, but so far, it's retaken um, or tried to retake the 50, got rejected there so far. Um, so yeah, it's not priority here, but it is something to watch. You've got fantastic earnings, um, not the greatest estimates here, um, increasing fund ownership and three high quality funds in there as well. Uh, let's take a look at TXG. So there's a genomic genomics one, and you can see right near a pivot here, stage three, a nice sales growth the last quarter, uh, not really a huge history. If we go to a weekly, actually there, there's a history of good sales growth here, but slowed down a little bit in June of 2020. And uh, it's right near a stage three pivots at 201.70. And um, this is a little bit weak here on higher volume, but it has moved up, uh, pulled back, then moved up higher low. That looks good. And higher low as well, consolidating right below this. So you've got some pivots here. It tried to break out on this past Wednesday, failed that. Um, and uh, yeah, pulled back on lower volume the last three days or so. So this, this kind of breakout attempt was on very low volume, which is often a tell that it might not be successful. Yeah, I agree. Um, even if the banks are set up, it's it's they're kind of slower movers. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at SC, because that's a popular one, I'm sure. Oop, can't type today. Um, yeah, it's forming a stage four cup, so a little bit later stage here. If we go to a weekly, um, it, I don't think it reset in the March correction. Um, found support right at the 40 week here. Um, but anyway, forming a little bit of a handle, this could go sideways for a while longer and then break out, but so far it looks constructive, and uh, this handle is on lower volume, a little bit of not crazy volume coming in, but slightly above average, and uh, <clears throat> very good sales, very strong sales, not supposed to be profitable in the next two years, comms rating is very poor at 60, but you've got incre increasing fund ownership and high quality funds, so yeah, there's a, there's a promising stock. I know a lot of people in Fintwit own this one. And uh, so far, it's looking constructive. We'll see how this cup and handle resolves. Let's see. Take a look at WAL. Yeah, strong, strong breakout here on Friday. Looks great. Uh, so this was probably on earnings. You got a nice earning surprise. That's always good to see. Um, and good estimates. Estimate revision strong. Slightly increasing fund ownership, one high quality fund. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, this would have been a great pivot to catch. Um, taking over the Livermore level as well. 
And uh, next stop potentially is this point if it get, can get through that. Uh, clear sailing for sure. I'm not sure if this is all time highs. Um, it is. So yeah, definitely looks good. Uh, let's take a look at Orgo. Uh, so this one is just really just trending upward above the 21 EMA and uh, very strong earnings and sales the past three quarters. Not the greatest estimates for this year, but very strong for next year. Um, increasing fund ownership, not too many funds in this one just yet and no high quality funds. So a little bit of a lower quality name, but is trending beautifully. You can't argue with that. And this all started with a nice uh, gap up here. Um, I guess not on earnings, probably most likely some news event. Uh, this is a medical products company, so maybe FDA approval, uh, but looks very strong if you can find your way into one of these. Um, even though it is volatile, it can be very, very lucrative. Uh, let's take a look at edit because I think this one is very far from all time highs and looks pretty bad here on this Friday. So going back to a weekly here, let's get some perspective actually going to a monthly. You've got a longer term pivot here, and um, that's around 44, I'm just estimating here, and a very strong move up here. If we go back to a daily, uh, this started from the stage one consolidation, standard pivot 39.96, super powerful move up on volume. Then you had a high tight flag here, very strong move up of that, but quickly that failed, became very choppy here, and I tried this off the 50 here. It basically stopped me out the next day or two days later here. And since then, it's just decreased, decreased, decreased. So I don't like how it's gone from 100 all the way down to uh, this close at 34.67. So anything more than 30% off highs is not really on my radar. And especially when you see all this distribution, high volume down days, especially this one, a gap down close near the low. Uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe it finds support at the low of this base. But I like to buy the strongest stocks trending above key moving averages, breaking out of bases. And this one is doing the opposite of that. Opposite of that. If you turn this upside down, it might look good. Uh, but right now, um, yeah, not for me. Uh, RS rating an eight, and uh, we'll see how the fund ownership numbers come in. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, Vale. Yeah, this one. This one pulled back and then and then really moved up quickly. So yeah, nice volume on this day at least. Uh, not a super strong move up right here on volume, but um, price action looks great, breaking out of this kind of longer term base. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Great estimates for 2021. Uh, top industry group, 20 out of 197, increasing fund ownership, and uh, nice earnings last quarter as well. Um, and I think uh, BNTX is also a cool one to look at. So this is obviously vaccine related. There were just some news that uh, likely will have some booster shots, which is unfortunate. Uh, but we'll see what happens. And anyway, this has been super powerful off the bottom, um, consolidating back to the 200 day moving average and going to a weekly to get some perspective. Um, this looks like a very, very strong bar here. And I'll be watching to see if this kind of pulls back, maybe tightens up here for a few days and then breaks a downward trend line or something like that. But this looks super strong, great volume coming in. Earnings are due in 22 days, uh, but these earnings were very, very strong. So it's interesting that earnings are due 22 days when they just report earnings. But uh, regardless, looks very, very, very good. And uh, yeah, you kind of had this cheap pivot, but I wasn't really watching this one. But uh, yeah, super strong name, uh, great earnings, great estimates. Uh, this is really what we call a breakout year. Um, but it is supposed to decrease a little bit in 2022. We'll see what happens. Uh, but estimate revisions are up. So uh, yeah, looks looks pretty good. Uh, PayPal, let's take a look at that one. Yeah, this one's forming the right side of base. Looks a little bit like ZS, CrowdStrike as well, forming a little bit of a pivot here, uh, but definitely needs to be a little bit more mature, more mature of a handle here. Um, and not the largest volume on this move up. That's one drawback here, but retaking the 50 and 21 EMA, uh, those are back to increasing, which is a good sign. You've got the standard pivot at 309.14. Uh, nice estimates and estimate revisions are up um, and solid, um, consistent earnings. This is a a nice longer term leader to have in your portfolio to kind of balance out those volatile IPOs. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty good. And look at that very consistent growth here in both, of, in both in terms of sales and earnings. And speaking of volatile IPOs, we've got Roblox. Uh, so broke out, looked good, uh, then pulled back right away um, down 8% um, on this day, then just chopping around, forming an inside day on Friday 
Let's go to a 60 minute chart here. Um, so this is the standard IPO pivot here. Um, you had some cheat entries potentially in here, a retest and reclaim here. And now it's pulled back on volume below this and it's still chopping a little bit around. So we'll see what happens. You've got some pivots here, here, and of course the standard IPO base pivot. So um, I like the, the fundamentals. I don't know too much about this myself, but it seems like um, it's a very popular thing. You've got accelerating sales the past four quarters. Um, not the strongest estimates, but um, the price action is, is decent. And uh, we'll see what happens and how this IPO base resolves. Uh, keep in mind, this could completely fail and undercut all of this. Um, definitely keep an open mind. I always trade with a stop loss to make sure um, that I'm keeping my risk in check. Cool. Let's take a look at Twitter. And keep the suggestions coming. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do JMIA in just a second. Uh, so Twitter, pulling back to this pivot here, um, stronger than pins for sure on, on this past Friday, but still a little bit of an expectation breaker. But this entire consolidation is on very low volume. That's a good sign. This move up, you had one above average volume day. So I'd like to see a little bit more volume, but you had a lot of nice volume here in this strong run up. So, uh, so we'll see what happens. This is a stage two um, base. And you've got this cheat entry here. And then, of course, if it forms a consolidation again, right here below all-time highs, you've got that as a potential pivot before it reaches 80.75. Uh, looking at JMIA, I think there's another one well off its highs. Uh, yeah, this is not in my focus. It's going the wrong way. Uh, if the chart was flipped up, it's up. Uh, geez. If the chart was flipped upside down, you'd be watching for a breakout here. So uh, that should tell you something if you're holding long. Um, and uh, yeah, looks like a trip potentially to the 200 day moving average. And uh, you can see no real fundamentals to speak of. This is really a story stock, uh, no real institutions owning this and no high quality funds at all. Retail internet is pretty low on uh, the leadership groups and we'll see what happens with this one. Um, FCX, yeah, let's take a look at that one. Yep. Um, top group here, metals and mining ore, and nice double bottom breakout here, stage one. So that's great. Nice volume on this breakout. Um, so yeah, this is still actionable. It's still within this pivot. I wouldn't want to buy too extended here, um, but you've also got the breakout to all-time highs, 39.10. And uh, yeah, super estimates for 2021. Look at that. Estimate revisions are up. Um, great quarterly earnings as well. Uh, comms rating 99. Can't really complain too much about this. This looks, this looks great. A strong prior uptrend, then a nice constructed base, and a, a breakout on volume uh, looks pretty good. We'll see what happens here. Uh, CPNG, I know that's another IPO here. Uh, I don't like this bar, how far it basically declined on that first day, uh, but it is very tight here. Um, but it did try to break out from some tight price action and then get stopped out. Let's go to a 60-minute chart here. Um, so, uh, yeah, it got tight try to break out and then fail the next day, but it is very, very tight on the right-hand side. Look at that. Look at the <clears throat> look at the last few bars here. This is very, very tight action. So um, <clears throat> that means it can probably move pretty quickly either way, so be ready. <clears throat> Let's take a look at SCCO. Yeah, double bottom base here. You've got a standard pivot here, 79.62. Uh, consolidation pivot last week. And uh, nice volume. So yeah, I'll, I'll be watching this one too. Good estimates. Um, not quite as strong annual estimates or earnings estimates. Uh, but yeah, definitely want to watch. Uh, let's take a look at Zim. This looks super strong. Nice consolidation here. Then a breakout on volume. It's one of the few stocks working on this past Friday. But um, yeah, it formed its IPO base. Broke out here. This is also kind of a high tight flag IPO base, which is interesting. And yeah, um, pull back all the way to this pivot. Found support there. Find support a little bit at the 21 EMA. So um, personally, if if um, if I want to start a whole new position here, I'd wait for um, a pullback to 21 EMA. It's it's too extended from this moving average a little bit for me. If we take a look here. It's it's 17.2 percent from the 21 EMA. So um, yeah, I, I like to buy within a few percent of the 21 EMA personally. It just it's just a better way for me of handling risk. But obviously, if you're a quicker mover, you can buy these um, short consolidation pivots and, uh, yeah, get some good gains that way. 
Uh, PLTR, I think I saw that mentioned by John. Uh, once again, far from all-time highs. Um, if you flipped it upside down, it's, it's kind of close to, it actually was a kind of uh, short pivot to the, to the downside here on this past Friday. Um, yeah, it's still basing here. Um, it's, it's not on my focus list. It's not showing a lot of strength here, even if the story is so great. Um, it's went, it's gone from 45 to basically 20 and, uh, yeah, needs a lot of time before it would shape up and, uh, it might enter a very long uh, due diligence period before making another major move. Um, this is already a very strong IPO advance phase. Uh, MU, let's take a look at that one. I know this failed um, a breakout here last week. Pull back to 21 EMA. This move down was on higher volume, which is one drawback, but you've got very strong earnings sales here. Um, estimates, very good. Gradual fund ownership increase and no high quality funds. So I'll keep this on my radar, but um, as for now, it failed this breakout. Um, and we'll see if it can kind of move back up, set up again, and uh, try to break out once more. Yeah, if you're holding PLTR from the IPO um, day, uh, I mean, you're doing well. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. Uh, but yeah, it, it's completely different if you own a position from down here versus you bought up here and are holding and hoping. Uh, I never want to be holding and hoping. I want to honor my rules, honor risk management. As soon as it failed the 50 SMA, that, that was my key, that uh, this need more time. You've got a lot of gaps down on volume. Um, and uh, yeah, it is forming higher lows. So I'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But so far, um, not really in my focus. Let's see. Adobe. Let's take a look at that one. I know that I think broke out recently or it's very close to breaking out. It is straight off the bottom, so I would want some consolidation here before uh, trying it out. Uh, but uh, looks good. Um, very strong, consistent earnings and sales. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is basically a company whose services I use every day to make these videos and all of that. So I'm very familiar with the products. Um, great fund ownership increases, top funds in here as well, and uh, looks pretty good. Oh yeah, Tesla. We gotta do Tesla, of course. Um, yeah, um, kind of similar to Crowd, uh, ZS, all of those moving up the right-hand side, forming a little bit of a pivot here. And uh, I like this move up here, this this day and this day, ending at the highs, very strong. Back above the 50 SMA, this line is decreasing, which is one drawback, uh, but still very strong earnings, good estimates for 2021 and 2022, um, increasing fund ownership, top funds, all of that. And we'll see if it, this can uh, form up again. This would be a... Um, a stage two base, I believe, if, if this actually gets picked up as a base, this is kind of a wide and loose consolidation, but it's starting to shape up a little bit, forming some higher lows here, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, crowd, let's, let's talk about crowd. So this has a similar look, but I think a little bit better than Tesla. Um, it's a 33% deep base, which isn't too bad. And you've got a couple consolidation days. You've got this pivot and uh, yeah, nice estimates, great earning sales and margins. If I, if I could always trade stocks with these types of earning sales and margins, that's great. Um, acceleration all four quarters in terms of earnings, sales growth, incredibly consistent and margins improving as well. Um, let's see, let's do RK. Uh, so this is another kind of tell that a lot of the former leaders aren't doing too great. Um, this is still well off all-time highs, although it is kind of shaping up here below the 50 SMA, so we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Let's see, any other suggestions, guys? Happy to talk about really anything, or, or I can go through some of my watch lists. Um, I see PUBM. Let's talk about this one. Uh, it's a little bit... Volatile here, um, a little bit of a move on Friday against the 50 SMA, and uh, <clears throat> really strong earnings this past quarter, um, and also the quarter previously. Um, not too many funds in here, but already two high quality funds, which is good. Uh, this is kind of like a TTD, MGNI. I, I'm not an expert, so obviously do a little bit more due diligence if that's what you need to do. I'm not in a top group so far, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, very strong performance IPO base. 
and uh, now forming this type of consolidation. But obviously, this can go sideways for a lot longer. If we go back to PLTR, um, it had this move up from its IPO base, consolidation, move up, and now it's still consolidating. So always keep an open mind with any stock that you're looking at. And um, those recent IPOs are going to be more volatile. They often has, have uh, sh smaller floats. Uh, so definitely position size accordingly and make sure you're managing your risk properly. Um, SI, let's take a look at that. Uh, so this is earnings in two days. Um, it's definitely a wide and loose space. Um, potential leader within the kind of crypto um, space. It kind of manages the transactions. Um, very strong group here. Increase in fund ownership to high quality funds, but... Uh, with earnings so close and the chart so volatile, we'll see what happens. Maybe we have it, it has an earnings breakout. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll play it then. But definitely not for the week harder. This one really whips around intraday. Let's go to a 60-minute chart. And uh, yeah, this, this one is very volatile, so keep that in mind. Uh, HZNP, I think that one's been shaping up nicely. So let's take a look at that one. Yeah, right, right below a pivot here. A little bit of a squat here on this Thursday, uh, but a hammer off the 50 SMA area here on um, on Friday. So it is a stage four, so a little bit later in the game. I was watching it here with this breakout and then this pullback to the 21 EMA here, and it had a nice breakout, but then pretty much just went sideways and undercut all those moving averages. Uh, but really strong earnings, and uh, it's kind of rare for biotechs to have earnings, so uh, that definitely makes it stand out here, but um, I like how the estimates are increasing, comps are rating is in 95, increasing fund ownership, and three high quality funds. Yeah, let's talk about Dash. I think this had a nice move to end the week. Um, yeah, very strong week, but once again, still within its longer term um, due diligence phase, a nice undercut of the kind of IPO lows, and a powerful move up on volume, but still, you're very early to this, and you, you don't have to be. Uh, the big move is going to happen when it breaks out to all-time highs. Um, so you don't have to play this, especially if uh, you don't have to get the low. You want to buy at the right time, not necessarily the lowest price. And right here, um, there's a lot of people trapped up here who want to sell to get back to break even, which is why this, this is kind of a lower probability setup. Uh, yeah, I already, John, I already did Roku, so um, when you're watching this back, you can go back and check that out as well. Um, Futu, let's take a look at that. Yeah, so this is forming a little bit of a flag here against the 50 SMA, lower volume the past few weeks. Um, definitely a wide and loose base, not proper, and uh, a strong prior move, but still really uh, the best fundamental num numbers you'll see out there here in terms of quarterly earnings, annual earnings. Um, not the greatest fund ownership here. It is increasing, but still very low. And you don't have any high quality funds in here. And this is a China-based company. So keep that in mind. There's a little bit of added risk here. Um, but yeah, it's it's tightening up a little bit. Still pretty volatile intraday. And uh, we'll see what happens. And looking at Tiger, just because. Um, this looks worse. This is This is a lot weaker here. Well off its highs. Um, and still basically 50% off its highs here. And uh, yeah, it pulled back all the way to 12.87 from 38.50. So yeah, not really on my focus here, um, on my focus list here. And I think I saw skills, which is very similar. Uh, this is not something I want to be invested in. I mean, it basically gave back a 200% gain, uh, showed no real support at the 50 SMA, and uh, yeah, it doesn't appear to be under accumulation to me. You can see last quarter, uh, two, two more funds bought it. Uh, you've got some high quality funds in there, but at this point, um, not really on my focus list. Um, <clears throat> I want stocks trending above a rising 200 day, 50 day, 21 EMA, 10 day. Uh, those are the strongest st stocks right near all time highs. Uh, this one is well off the lows and all those moving averages are curling down here, uh, which isn't a great sign. Um, CDNS, that's another semiconductor stock. I believe, oh no, it's not. It's computer software design, uh, but it is related to um, circuit design. So that's interesting. Uh, right near pivot, a little bit of a wedge up here on a below average volume. So that might indicate that it might consolidate a little bit, then form a pivot here. Uh, but yeah, um, stage 2B base, 
nice earnings, not the greatest estimates, increasing fund ownership, and three high quality funds in there as well. Uh, UPST, let's take a look at that one. I know that's a popular one. Um, very strong estimates for 2021, so I'll have this on my radar. Um, it's so far, actually, I think it, clo it closed below the pivot here of uh, this, this high here. So this one is still basing. Once again, you don't need to buy the low of a base to profit from a stock. The big move is going to happen when it breaks out here on volume and sticks. So um, unless you're an advanced trader here, uh, this is very volatile. It's tough to trade, and uh, there's risk of gap downs um, just because it moves so quickly. So keep that in mind <clears throat> and position size accordingly. This is definitely a volatile stock. Uh, CELH, let's take a look at that one. Uh, so this one had a big gap down on earnings, but it closed well off the lows. Um, however, it's still a gap down on earnings. So um, this high volume close is kind of a pivot to me, and it kind of retook that after some consolidation and is well off to the races off the bottom here. I wouldn't expect it to just break out to all time highs. That wouldn't be normal, but some pauses, some moves up, some pauses, some moves up would pre present good entry points along the way before the breakout to all time highs. Very strong prior uptrend. This is a stage three base. Um, nice estimates for 2022. Great quarterly earnings reports as well. Increasing fund ownership, but no high quality funds. RS rating still 99, but um, I think the three month RS is probably a lot worse than that. But uh, yeah, it's back above all the key moving averages. I would like to see the 50 SMA shift back to support. Um, although I don't think it really obeyed that moving average, I guess a little bit during this base, but um, I know right here it obeyed the 21 EMA pretty well here. I was involved uh, for this run up, got stopped out around here, I believe. Um, so yeah, definitely one worth watching. I don't like this gap down, but it has recovered that high volume close. Uh, V-Cell, let's take a look at that one. I'm not fam familiar with this one. Uh, human cell products, cell therapy, um, not in a top group here. Um, great estimates for the next two years. Uh, not the strongest quarterly earnings. Um, trending really well above the 21 EMA. Pull back to the 10 week 50 SMA here. Um, increasing fund ownership, one high quality fund in there as well. So yeah, trending really well. Um, you've got this pivot. Yeah, not too bad for a swing trade. Uh, this doesn't look too bad. Let's go to a weekly here. Um, looks like it's at all-time highs. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, so you've got some overset, overhead supply back in the 2000s. So it is pretty f long time ago. So it's not s super relevant and a really powerful move recently from this kind of longer-term base breakout. Yeah, Scott said a lot of last year's winners are going to need months of basing. Completely agree. Um, even the ones that have moved up off the bottom, pins, snap, uh, we'll see how they work out. Uh, David asks, in mode, um, I already covered that one. If you can catch the replay, it will be at the beginning. Um, PLBY, uh, interesting one. Yeah, uh, super powerful move. Looks like a SPAC here. Uh, not really in in my wheelhouse, and uh, yeah, super extended. I'm not getting involved here, no matter what the fundamentals are. Uh, don't think a stock can just keep doing this for the next four months. It's going to have really dramatic pullbacks. Um, I don't know when they're going to happen, but I mean, just look at skills, look at the other SPACs. Some of them pull back all the way to basically $10. So always keep that in mind when, when buying and trading these type of stocks. Uh, snow. Let's take a look at that one. So this is another one well off its highs, but it's shaping up a little bit. Um, consolidation on low volume, very low volume on this past Friday on uh, this kind of upside reversal bar. So um, I want to see it kind of form out here, the 50 SMA to get below it and start curling up. And then potentially it has a shot at moving up and, and challenging these all time highs. But once again, very low within the base, you've got a lot of, a lot of overhead supply to deal with from everybody who bought up here. <clears throat> uh, FNKO, let's take a look at that one. I think that's like Playboy. Uh, not, qu not, not quite as straight up here, but still very similar. Very volatile, uh, not really in my wheelhouse. Um, great annual earnings. Yeah, but uh, super volatile price action is holding the 21 EMA. It looks like it, it obeys that line pretty well. Going back to the left, um, breakout of a stage one, so 
yeah, a nice volume coming in, but it is closing well off its highs here. So uh, that's one one drawback here. That's that there's some flaws in this chart. This is not a super. This is not a classic canceling base by any means. Um, Pan W. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, forming out a base here, similar to crowds. Yes, I believe. If we go to the weekly, let's take a look at the group. Um, yeah, INVE is the leader in terms of RS, and I think FTNT is in terms of EPS. But yeah, Palo Alto uh, looks pretty good. Moving out the right hand side here, um, undercut this base. So this is a stage one, which is a good sign. Uh, this isn't a super fast mover, I believe, going from 260 to, well, actually 260 to 375 isn't that bad in just a few weeks. But um, yeah, stage one base, standard pivot 403. We'll see what happens. Uh, once again, this is straight off the bottom. So I would expect some type of consolidation somewhere. Um, but of course, cups can just break out and then consolidate up here as well. Uh, you just have to watch the volume here. Um, estimates decent for the next two years. Estimate revisions down. That's one drawback. Um, but yeah, good, decent quarterly earnings going back to a weekly, uh, nice, consistent sales growth and, uh, not the greatest earnings growth here, but still pretty strong. Uh, looking at INVE, this is number one in the group. Uh, this is actually right at the pivot and had a nice upside reversal bar on Friday. So this is interesting, not the strongest numbers, but the RS is leading the group and going back to, FTNT. This one has just been going strongly from the stage one base and just trending beautifully above the moving averages. Find support at the 21 EMA right here and here, here and here. And uh, yeah, this will consolidate at some point and I'll be watching this one to see if uh, I can get in somewhere. Uh, G, yeah, um, Scott says FNKO got some NF, yeah, NFT action. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of little, little bit of everything. Uh, GDRX, take a look at that one. Another potentially disruptive um, healthcare stock, and this is a huge double bottom. But um, <clears throat> once again, you're buying very low within the base, so a little bit of uh, a lower probability setup. Um, if you're quick, I think this was a nice undercut and rally here. Uh, but obviously you've, you've got to be pretty advanced and, and be watching this pretty closely to be targeting that. But um, sales growth, um, decent estimates for 2021 and 2022, um, decreasing fund ownership, but one high quality fund. So we'll see what happens here. Once again, the true move, if it ever happens, it's going to happen above this line right here and at least above this line. And yeah, let's, let's take a look at TDOC as well. So this pulled back all the way down to the bottom of the base, but it is potentially finding support there so far. I don't like all this selling volume here. And uh, we'll see if it can break out above these points here, retake the 200 day. I don't like, I don't like how the 50 SMA is just curling down like this. And so far you can see the RS rating is an H that's pretty poor, but it has very strong sales growth the past two quarters. Um, not supposed to be profitable, but definitely improving its earnings in 2021 and 2022. Um, pretty bad um, IBD ratings here. And uh, you've got increasing fund ownership, three high quality funds. So we'll see what happens if this can firm up. And um, going over to, there's one other beating down it, Peloton. That's also similar to this, but looks a little bit better. Uh, definitely it's above the 200 day. Um, challenging the 50 SMA, having a little bit of trouble here. You've got this pivot here, which it closed below on Friday. Um, but we'll see if this can shape its way up here and form out this right hand side. Um, who knows? They've still got strong estimates for 2022, very strong quarterly earnings, nice increase in fund ownership, and three high-quality funds. So, um, yeah, we'll see if this can shape up again. But once again, a lot of the former leaders that basically 10x last year are going to need a lot of time to consolidate those moves before uh, the fundamentals catch up with their valuation. And, uh, yeah, along that line... Along those same lines, ZM, once again, very long-term consolidation. Um, my former professor, Dr. Wish, uh, whenever a stock would form a new all-time high and then rest for at least three months, he would draw in a line at that high, call it a green line. Obviously, I can't color it in MarketSmith. Uh, but anyway, he basically just said he wouldn't get involved again until a stock breaks this line. So anything under this, any, any of this chop, 
is just basing. Um, until it gets through here, um, it's not really going to make a sustained move. Um, obviously, if you're if you're if you've got a different kind of entry setup, different edge, you can buy down here, and uh, yeah, trade trade it up here. But yeah, um, I like stocks trending above their 200-day, and this is below uh, at for the, at this moment. Um, but this line is increasing. But the 50 SMA you can see is just curling down, and it's it's had trouble a few times near the 50 SMA. Ozon. Let's take a look at that one. So yeah, this is an e-commerce company out in Russia forming a cup here, stage one cup. Um, once again, kind of straight off the bottom here, you had a kind of cheap pivot at 58.73. So I might expect some consolidation before I move up. But yeah, um, not the strongest fundamentals here. It does have 51% sales last quarter, but not supposed to be profitable within the next few years. Um, Causal rating is a 46. Nice increase in fund ownership, but no high quality funds. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with this one. All right, guys, I think I'll just take a few more here and call it a day. Um, but definitely, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. I'd be happy to answer those. Um, and if you're enjoying the stream, please go ahead and leave a like down below. It really does help, help me out and the channel. And if you want to see more streams and videos, um, interviews with top traders, go ahead and subscribe as well. Um, yeah, Scott, Scott, this is a great point. Uh, he says... Tesla had a six-year base before it broke out again. So if we go to Tesla, go to a monthly, you can draw a green line here and also here. Uh, the big move happened when it broke out of this, but also right here. If you just caught it at 80, you had a 10 at, excuse me, <clears throat> you had a 10x in under a year. So the big move happens when stuff breaks out of longer-term consolidations. But below that is often just a lot of chop. And there, there's no real trend here. Um, institutions are just kind of fighting back and forth. And we want to get involved when the probabilities are in our favor. And that's when it breaks out of nice longer term bases, starts a trend, and forms other smaller consolidations within the context of an overall very strong uptrend driven by that earnings growth, that industry group strength. All of those factors come into play. Uh, but the probabilities are more in our favor when stocks are above the longer term base. Um, as a trader, that's that's just the, the best place to be. Uh, just we're, we're trading with the trend when that happens. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at you. <clears throat> Go to a daily here. So once again, you had a large gap down on volume and that started this kind of weakness here. So um, yeah, be Basically, be on the lookout here. If you own positions and they gap down like this, I, I felt it with Fastly a few times last year. Uh, but anyway, uh, this can mark the beginning of underperformance and drawdown. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, it is trying to bottom a little bit, forming some higher lows around 100. So you've got some pivots here at 103.93. This one here as well. Uh, 21 EMA is back below price. 50 SMA is still declining. Uh, so we'll see what happens. It's right near the kind of consolidation from its IPO base. Uh, so once again, if you bought it here and, and traded this, you don't want to give it all back. You want to follow your rules and, and get out portions when it breaks the 10 day, 21 EMA, 50 SMA, however you want to do it. But definitely this gap down on volume that that would have, I would have sold all my shares on that basically open right there. Uh, I'm not going to be analyzing any crypto guys. Sorry. Not, not my forte. MP, let's take a look at this one. Uh, once again, breaking out to the downside, not what you want to see, um, and some shaky action here. No support at the 50-day, and uh, yeah, not, not on my focus list. And uh, how far does the price have to be above a moving average for you to sell? That's a great question. Selling into strength when a stock gets super extended from the 21 EMA can be a great way to Minimize the drawdowns when a stock pulls back sharply. Um, for me, I think 15% of the 21 EMA is is kind of my caution level, um, and I, I'm still I'm still figuring that out. Kind of what is the optimal um, percentage above that? Obviously, it depends on the character of the stock too. Some of the stocks can be very extended, like SI here um, got very extended for quite a long time as it just kind of went straight up here, and then had some exhaustion gaps before forming this very shaky base. So. Uh, selling when it gets super extended from the 21 EMA um, might feel bad when it continues to go up, 
But when a stock drops 50% in just a few weeks after that, you feel a little bit better. So it's a way of kind of um, flattening out your equity curve. Joe asked, did you look at Zim yet? I did. Um, and I think I'll just do one more and, and then we'll call it a stream. But uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. It's, it's awesome to be able to answer you guys' questions live. That's awesome. Um, FCX. Let's take a look at that one. Uh, yeah, we actually, I think we already talked about this one. Um, looks very good. Double bottom base right here. Great earnings. Uh, UCTD. Let's end with that one. I think that's a semiconductor stock. Yep. Um, so it looks, looks weaker than a lot of the semis and it is trending well from the stage one, but pretty volatile up here. You've got two gap ups and then expectation breaker on this bar. So, um, and this is on actually this bar, this gap down was on the highest volume in, uh, since the base. So yeah, I, I'd be wary with this one. It, it doesn't look as strong as an AMAT, um, an LRCX or definitely not NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA looks looks very strong. If this if this goes sideways here, I'll definitely be looking for um, some way to get into this potential leader. Super strong earnings, sales, um, institutional support, all of that. So looks great. Thanks, Adam, man. Thanks for hitting the like button. Awesome. Um, I think we'll call it there. Thank you guys all for tuning in. If you have any further questions, let me know on Twitter. Uh, thanks, Scott. Thanks for sh turning in. Uh, let's do five real quick. Um, yeah, super tight here. Um, I don't know if this is a very fast mover. So 115 to 200 in a few months. Uh, that used to be a fast mover, but now not so much since 2020. But yeah, ascending base looks pretty good through these levels and uh, consolidating on lower volume. So yeah, um, looks decent. Oh, uh, Blake, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Cool, guys. Um, I guess I'll call it there. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Leave a like if you haven't yet and subscribe to the channel also if you haven't yet. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in future videos. Thanks.